Hi, welcome. Uh, in this video, we're going to go through problem two. So problem two says, um, let f be the function given by f of x equals 300 x minus x cubed. On which of the following intervals is the function f increasing? Now, we know that f increasing is synonymous with f prime greater than zero, right? So if we can figure out um, f prime, then we could just determine where f prime is greater than zero and we're done. Because where f prime is greater than zero um, is where f is increasing, because f prime is telling us a slope of f, remember. So f prime is easily seen to be um, 300 minus 3x squared. OK, great. So setting this equal to zero means setting 300 equal to 3x squared. Right? Setting f prime equals equal to zero is the same thing as this statement here. Dividing by three, we'd realize in a simplified version that it is actually just setting 100 equal to x squared. So then solving, we know that x has two values, which is plus or minus 10. So that means that we have two critical numbers, positive and negative 10. So those are places where f prime is equal to zero, in this instance anyway. Okay. So we draw a number line for f prime and then put our two critical numbers on this number line. So let's put negative 10 here. Symmetry says that positive 10 should be somewhere here. Great, now these two critical numbers, notice, divide our number line into three intervals. One to the left of negative 10, one between negative 10 and 10, and another one between um, 10 to positive infinity. Now, we know that we only need to test a single value into f prime in each of these three intervals we pointed out. So in the interval to the left of negative 10, why don't we use negative 11? That is, let's find out what f prime of negative 11 is. Well, this would mean, since f prime is that fella there, 300 minus 3 times negative 11 squared. That would say 300 minus 3 times 121. Now, some clever factoring says 300 could be written as 3 times 100 minus, of course, 3 times 121 is the rest of it. And of course, we could then see that 3 is a common factor. We could take out 3 and observe that what we'd have is the difference between 100 and 121, which is surely a negative number. So this is without much more argument less than zero, because that's less than zero, right? Cool. So then that just means that to the left of negative 10, f prime is negative. OK, great. And then between negative 10 and 10, we can cherry pick, which is we could just find out what f prime of zero is. And zero is an easy number to plug in always, right? So we just get 300. Nice. OK, so that means f prime is positive everywhere between negative 10 Got it. And then without much imagination, really, we know that if we plugged in positive 11, since f prime, not f, but f prime is an even number, it, it will not discriminate between negative 11 and positive 11. Therefore, we should get that f prime of positive 11. Eh, that was so ugly. Uh, f prime of positive 11 is also less than 0, as was f prime of negative 11. Um, therefore, um, in fact, it should be the same value, that number, right? And, and therefore, um, we know that to the right of positive 10, we are negative. That is, f prime is negative. So remember, we're after where f prime is greater than 0, which is where it's f prime positive. And then, so we'll have to pick this interval there. And the only answer with that interval is uh, this answer choice, which is the best answer. Okay, got it. Um, I don't like how I circled that. Okay, uh, keep watching. Take care.